Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to be here and to talk with you about line sheets. Um, it's a topic that keeps coming up again and again. And we've had such an interesting year uh, last year. And I'm getting a lot of designers saying, you know, how do I approach stores? Uh, do I need to send a line sheet? Aren't people tired of getting line sheets in the mail? They want to go paperless. So we're going to just talk about all of that today. So welcome, welcome. And um, okay, so let me click here. Oh, here we go. All right. So before we get started, for those of you who don't know who I am, I thought I'd kind of give you a little bit of background of um, who I am and my history. I actually grew up uh, selling retail. My mom had a store. I had a sister who had a store. Um, and then I went to college and I studied fashion and marketing and retail management. So I have a big passion for stores and all things retail. I then started working for stores like Gap, um, really big box, uh, behind the scenes in the operations. I first worked in the stores and then I went, went to work into the corporate area of things. So William Sonoma, Gap, uh, and got a really good education for that type of the business. And then I fell in love with handmade product and I ended up working for small niche brands and found my way to dog-eared jewelry. And dog-eared was a 14-year-old company when I started with them. I was with them for five years and they grew 800% in the five years I was there. So it was really amazing and crazy. And uh, we grew really quickly and there were a lot of mistakes made, but there were also a lot of successes. And when I made a choice to leave dog-eared, I wanted to share all the knowledge that I had learned with other designers and small niche brands. So just to give you a little bit more of my background with Dog Eared is that I was working with stores like Neiman Marcus, Sundance Catalog, Ylang 23, Twist. I even worked with nonprofits like St. Jude's and Make-A-Wish. Um, we worked with Anthropology. So lots of experience. Oh, we were um, with Nordstrom and we were on a replenishment um, set up with them. So I actually started all of these companies, um, with the exception of Sundance, were companies that I personally got to work with and start with um, carrying dog eared. And in 2010, I left to start Red Boot Consulting. And in 2012, my good friend Tracy Matthews approached me about an idea she had for an online educational platform for jewelry designers called Flourish and Thrive Academy. And I was hooked. I was like, absolutely sign me up. I want to help designers. So that's a little bit about um, my background. I really love the wholesale and uh, the vendor buyer relationship. So I have with my Red Boot Consulting, I really help designers focus on wholesale. It's an overall business strategy, but with definitely a wholesale component. And lately, there's been a lot of the designers I've been working with who are opening their own stores. So all very fun, um, and I love it. All right, so let's get down to the, let's start with, um, Hey everybody, I think Robin just got kicked out, but. Oh my gosh, I'm, that was really strange. I'm back. <laughs> okay. um, I'll go away and Robin will turn back on our video. Sorry for okay. that. All right, there we go. Sorry about that, y'all. All right, so you never get a second chance to make a first impression. I love this quote, and I think about this all the time with business. And if you can't get in front of your customer and you can't be in person with them, what are the other types of things that you can do to make a first impression? And I really consider your line sheets as part of that tool. That's part of that first impression. It is an extension of your brand and you want to make a really good first impression. So today we're going to be talking about the anatomy of a line sheet, your perfect line sheet for your business and knowing your buyer, because it does make a difference. All right, so anatomy of a line sheet. And I wanna know how many of you 
actually are currently selling wholesale. I would love to get an idea. Oh, can you pop that poll in? Yeah, on the right side of your screen, um, click on poll and it says, do you oh. sell, um, currently sell wholesale? And click yes or no, and I'm gonna publish the results in a minute. And Robin has a few more polls we'll put in too. Yes, I wanna, I wanna make sure you guys are with me and <laughs> engaged and polls are a great way to do that. So we've got right now about 65% say they don't sell wholesale and 34% said they do. So um, I'm curious to know, and you guys can, um, in the chat, let me know for those of you who don't sell wholesale, if you're actually interested in selling wholesale. So if you could in the chat, just give me a little heck yes. Um, oh, we've got some people say that they have about 30 accounts. All right, okay. Mary said she tried it once, it was, didn't, wasn't for her. So great feedback. All right, so let's talk about the anatomy of a line sheet. Photography, photography, photography. If there's anything you get from this conversation today is um, really make sure you have great photography. It's really important that you're able to really show your pieces. And I would say high resolution photography. And the reason being is now as you guys have experienced, we're now doing so much virtually. And even when you're printing and sending to your customers, if you're printing your line sheets, you want to make sure you have the most pristine imagery. Because if they can't get in front of it and they can't touch and feel it, you want to make sure that all the texture, everything that your your jewelry offers can really be seen. So have good photography and don't don't halfway that. It's really important. All right. Okay, so I've put together a little line sheet checklist. And just so you guys know that we are recording this, you're going to have access to this. You're welcome to even take a snapshot of it. Um, but uh, I love checklists and it's always good to know what you need. So your brand, your cover, you need a cover page, have your brand logo. If you, um, you can have a model shot on there with some of the jewelry, but have your information on your uh, front cover. Then you want your contact information. Your contact information should be on actually every page of your line sheet. Because here's the thing, if, you're, if you send line sheets out to your buyer and they, for some reason, the, it gets unstuck or you know it's unstapled or however you, it's adhered together for some reason maybe a page goes missing you want them to be able to contact you so the other thing too is um you you never you, you want to make it easy so you never want them to be without your information easy 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 and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well um, about the designer so it's important especially in today's time that people know who you are people do business with who they know like and trust and if they're just getting to know you if you're sending your line sheet out for the first time to a design to a, a buyer and they want they they want to know who you are what do you stand for um what's your inspiration all of that so it's really important to include that in your line sheets product images as i said first thing photography 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 make sure you have great images and i highly recommend doing it on a white background it keeps it's think of it this way you want your product to be the hero of the picture so sometimes when there's other things in the picture it can really distract and you want it just clean and easy easy to see the product and it's going to be so much easier for the buyer your product name um, some people like to name their products uh, some of the collections are named. It can be a name, uh, your style number or SKU, but make sure that's on there. Also, product descriptions. You want to make sure that you're describing the product. Some people want to do a little bit more of a romanticizing the product and giving a little more about it. And that's certainly a preference, uh, a choice that you can make. 
but the basics of you know what type of stones you're using the sizing the colors the variations metals all of that is really important when you're um, providing descriptions and your wholesale prices so i get asked a lot if the uh, suggested retail price should be on there it does not need to be on there you may run into if you do fine jewelry or you have certain price points or certain quantities that you sell for example costume jewelry a lot of times does it will sell in a minimum of 16 six to a pack or four to a pack you want to state that um, and there may be a minimum uh, price point that they have to hit so on occasion msrp is okay but I would say most buyers want to dictate what they sell in their store. That being said, when we get to the terms and conditions, I'll talk to you about how to talk about your MSRP um, and how to also not sell under um, a certain point where you'll have to monitor the stores that you're working with. All right, um, terms and conditions. You want to make sure that you have your terms and conditions in your line sheets because you also want to know the want to make sure the buyer knows exactly what your terms and conditions are in order to work with you. And I like to add an as seen in and as seen on. What I mean by that is as seen in would be any of the press that you've gotten um, and any of the and as seen on would be like any of the um, maybe some of your favorite clients who had sent pictures in or maybe a celebrity that's worn your work something like that is really fun to showcase and also gives um, better insight into your brand all right all right so i want to talk a little bit about the about page you want to share about you but also you know give a little bit uh, about the story how did you start the inspirations maybe you have um, received a halstead grant i think that's great to put in there if you um, have any special skills that you've learned or the certificates that you've earned um, the ethos about your business if you feel very passionately about the um, recycled metals you're using or the um, ethically sourced gemstones, put that in your about page. Also core values, um, your brand personality should show through in your about page. And I'm gonna show you some examples too, cause I'm sure you guys are like, give me some examples. It's much more fun to look at the examples. All right. Okay, before we do that, I wanna also add a few things. Sorry, you guys, I'm, I'm still kind of a little wonky on the slide, so I appreciate your patience. Okay, what I said earlier is about being really uh, easy for a buyer. And when you have your line sheets as far as uh, making it really clear and clean for a buyer, don't put so much into it that it's gonna distract. Again, you don't wanna distract from your product. And clean and easy means I know how to get a hold of you. I know all the met, you know, the metals, the class, the um, sizing of everything. I want to know all about the product, and I want to be able to read through your line sheet and not have any questions. That is my goal, and that should be your goal for your buyer. I also like to to um, make sure the buyer knows your what your best sellers are or what's new. And it's always good to include an order form. Whether you send it virtually, um, where you send line sheets virtually, you can attach um, at, the, at the end of the line sheet, you can attach an order form, or you can tell them how they can order the convenience of it. You know, again, it's all about making it convenient and easy for the buyer. Okay, so we're gonna go into some perfect line sheets and what you need for the perfect line sheet and we're going to have some examples but before i do that is there anything that you all have questions about okay i'm seeing in the chat here rachel is asking the best way to find wholesalers without having to go to expensive trade shows um you know what these are rachel great questions 
And why don't we um, address that at the end? Because I want to talk a little bit about um, there are so many ways to find stores nowadays. So um, let's hold on to that one. Kelly, if you can grab that. I'm everybody. Um, I'm following the chat and I'm writing down all of your questions and I'm going to throw them to Rob at the end. Um, I do have a few questions just about the line sheet or do you want to hold everything until the end? Let's let's bring some questions. Sure. Cool. For the line sheets, um, people are kind of talking about um, I know a lot of people do the white background photography. Do you um, are you anti black background photography or do you just think it's whatever your pieces look best on? I think just as far as as um, showcasing white just is standard and yeah. across the board. And also when you have it on white background, um, press is going to prefer that. And if you're sending and you kind of I, I would say just be prepared with white because you're also wanting to share. I mean, ideally, you want to share the photos with your retailers, with your wholesale accounts. So they can, in turn, use it. Um, they can then, with a white background, it's just easier to use for their press. It's easier to use on social media. I would say white is kind of um, the way to go. Pers and that's just across the board what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing from dis from uh, buyers. Okay. And I know you're going to show us some examples of line sheets, but people are asking, um, obviously, you want the white background product photography, but do you also include lifestyle photography in your line sheets? Yeah, you can do that and do that where, in fact, I was just talking to um, Harris Dolby showroom, which is a showroom based in California. And I was asking, you know, what what are they seeing? And they said that they are trying to incorporate because a lot of times they'll take the line sheets and um, rework them for their customers because they're kind of the, the main go to right for the for uh, the stores. So they'll take them and they'll add some model shots to that. And um, and I'll show you. I actually do have examples of that. What I mean. And again, it's um, it's really important to take into consideration how big your line is. Is your line made up of a lot of different collections? When I was at Dog Eared, we had a very extensive line. In fact, at one point had three different catalogs of product, and that can be very overwhelming for a buyer. So it's really good to know your buyer and then really um, pick and choose when you're working with them. So just you, you don't want to inundate people. But again, it's all going to depend on your your brand, your line, the different collections you have. You may have two collections in your line and they may be 15 pieces each and it's super easy and you just put it in one line sheet and you're done. So there's no cookie cutter for a line sheet, but this is going to help you really kind of define what you want to do for yours. Okay. Um, and then some people are asking, um, I mean, I'm guessing you need to have both prepared, but digital line sheets versus printed ones. Um, and then for digital ones, is there any software that you use to generate? Um, do you, is it a website link or a PDF? Do you have any suggestions on that? Yeah, it's funny. Um, I was also talking recently with Megan Patrice Riley, who's a jewelry designer who does send out cattle or line sheets. She sends out about 50 um, to some, some of her accounts, just that's how they work. They work through paper. And then she'll send out um, to potential new accounts, she'll send out a hard copy of a line sheet. Have both ready. I think it's really important to have a hard copy. I think it's really important to, or at least be able to print it out and send it on nice paper. Because if you're going to the effort of sending it, don't put it on just regular copy paper. You want to make sure they are high res images, that it looks good when you print it out. And, um, because it again, it's your brand that's going to be you know right in front of the customer. It doesn't have to be super fancy, but it does. I mean, the images have to look good. Um, and have have that digital copy ready. Um, some of the designers I talk with use a PDF. Some use a link uh, in their Dropbox. You know, it, um, getting to know, and we'll talk a little bit about this. Getting to know your buyer and really what works well for them. And everybody is different. I wish I could say again, it's cookie cutter. It is not. Um, and 
It is, there are many different ways that you can do a, a line sheet. Canva is a great tool. There is a company called Brand Boom that does um, line sheets. Uh, they're, you know, Flourish and Thrive I had a line sheet template. I can uh, talk with them, talk with, uh, and see if we can get a link to that. Um, you know, there are some that you can pay for. I, I think the most, and there are people that do line sheet work. So you can even hire somebody, a graphic designer to do your line sheets. It all is dependent on how you want it to look and, and how you want, it. um, there's InDesign also, which is another program. There are a lot of different programs that you can use. Um, I'm a fan of Canva. Uh, and it's ideally what you want to do is set it up so you're not having to reinvent invent the wheel each time that it's, um, a, you know, a look that you can just drag and drop where you need to. Um, and um, I'll show you some examples that will probably help you with just visually how it's going to yeah, look. The questions that are coming through um, as Robin moves through and you see examples, I think it's going to make a little bit more sense. Um, a lot of people are asking about one of a kind pieces. Um, Robin probably will be able to speak more of this, um, but if you have a basic design and, and the stones are one of a kind, um, that's definitely a way that that works. But Robin probably has some other advice on one of a kind for wholesale. Yeah. Um, what's exciting about one of a kind is that if you would ask me probably 15 years ago, if one of a kind, if you are one of a kind designer, if you can sell wholesale and I'd be like, yeah, not really. It's a little tough to do that. Nowadays, stores are really enjoying one of a kind. So yes, you can. And um, we'll talk a little bit. Don't let me forget, Kelly, about what kind, and I'll address that towards the end. Okay, for okay. sure. All right, well, let's keep going through, and then some of these questions I think will be answered. So, I'm all right. Okay, your perfect line sheet. So we talked about the about page, and I wanted to show you these two designers. This is um, Sarah, Sarah Winter Jewelry, and I've had the pleasure of working with Sierra for three years, and Elizabeth more jewelry and i've also had the pleasure of working with elizabeth and if you look at their about pages they're really you can tell the personality of the brand so sierra is a little more fashion forward and um she works in gold and she has um some vermeil and she does a little bit of fine jewelry but it's really more fashion forward and elizabeth is all fine jewelry it's um, she's very, uh, ethos conscious and, and, um, environmentally conscious. It's all made in New York where she lives. And she, as you can even see in how they're writing, Elizabeth has more details about her inspiration, her background, and, um, you get, you get a feel for their personalities, even in their pictures. So it's important to have a bat about page that reflects that. Okay, and let's talk about, um, we talked about photography a little bit and how important it is, but also aesthetically, when you're, when you're working through a line sheet and how it's going to look, don't smash everything in there. You want it to be really, um, easy to, to go through. You don't want people to kind of have to get a magnifying glass to see what, you know, what the style numbers are and all of that. So spacing's important. Um, having your collection name uh, is great to have. If you name your collections, it's always good to put that on the page where the, each collection, and again, I'll show you something, I'll show you some examples of that because I think it's easier to to see it um, and to get the idea when you see the, the actual pictures. Um, product name, a lot of designers name their products, so make sure you include that, the materials, the style number or skew, sizing, color and variations, wholesale price and product description. When we touched a little bit about that earlier, but these are things that are that you must have on your line sheet. Okay, so here's a great example. This is from uh, Sierra Winter Jewelry. I've taken off the pricing just as respect to her so you don't see her wholesale pricing. But you can see how easy is this to be able to shop. So the pictures are good. Um, the placement is really good. It's very, it's just easy. It's clean. 
You see her logo in the left-hand corner down at the bottom. You can, these are all ways to get a hold of her to see, you know, she's got her contact information. She's given you a lot of information about each product. It's just really easy and clean. And the next, this is Elizabeth Moore's collection. And this, I just chose, um, it's not even the full collection, but it's a couple pages of her Circle of Fists collection. And what I love about this too, is you can, she really wants you to know what her Circle of Fists is all about. So she goes in, she has a page that's just dedicated to telling you about the Circle of Fists and what inspired her and what inspired this collection. So I love that because you're really getting a feel of what this collection is all about. She's telling you. And then as you can see, she also has not only her logo, but she has the circle of fifths on both pages. And she, you can see the class um, there for the bracelets. You can, it's the photography, you know, um, Sierra's was very, uh, very linear. It's, you know, you could see things. It was very orderly. This has a little more movement to it, but it still works beautifully. All right, and this is courtesy of Sunday Girl, Amy DeLamar, and she has also, this is a collection that she has called the Crystal Intention Collection, and she also had a page that was dedicated to naming the collection so you know what this collection is about. And then she goes into some detail here in the, um, just a little blurb of what the, the Crystal Intention Collection is about, and she shows you all of the different bracelets that are involved in this collection that are part of this collection. And then she also shows you the back where you now see the class. How does it close? And um, so she's giving you that information. As you can see, I took away the pricing here. So just um, didn't want to share that with everybody. But this is very, again, clean, straightforward. She tells you what it is and you know exactly what you're getting. And this is Suzanne Schwartz, uh, Suzanne Schwartz Jewelry. And she, so these are actually two separate pages. It just looks like they're um, one, but it's two separate pages um, and it's part of her collection. And um, what I love about this collection is that you can see even um, the way it's laid out, again, very clean. It a, has a little more product than the others that I showed you but it's very clean. You can see the product um, and she gives you all the information and she works in gold and silver and uh, this, she provides you with the sizing of it. So again, and at the top, you'll see that it has her name, it has um, how to get in touch with her. So it, she's giving you everything that you need in order to place an order. And you can also tell that her jewelry is more art jewelry. All right, and this is courtesy of Town and Reese. Town and Reese is more of a costume jewelry, fashion costume jewelry line. And you can see they have, um, they're gonna have a product shot that's gonna introduce them, introduce you to the actual category. So for bracelets, it's a really nice shot of that bracelet. And then she goes, and then they go into the bracelet collections or the bracelet category and all they have in that category are bracelets so they've set up their line sheet a little differently than elizabeth moore has done elizabeth moore is going to do collections and town and reese is doing categories same thing with the rings it has a really nice product shot and then they go into um, all the rings offered in the line And then we had some questions about model shots. So this is a really great example. This is courtesy of Martell Studio. And this is exactly what um, somebody was asking about what we were talking about is that there are um, model shots to show how are the pieces being worn. And then you have the pieces and the details and all the information there. And this really helps a buyer too. Now, the only thing here that I don't see is I would really love to see how to get in touch with the designer, the vendor. I don't see any of that 
And that's the beauty of seeing these different line sheets. You see where there's some op missed opportunity there. So my feedback to Martel Studio has already been that um, I would love to see their information, at least at the bottom of um, how to get in touch with them. All right, colorways and metals. So different ways that you can actually showcase the different colorways and metals that you offer is doing something like this. So this is courtesy of Dogeared and most of Dogeared product is carded. So they're showing you the carded product and then in the smaller little circle, they're showing you um, a different version of it, which is a really acceptable way to do this where you can actually see what it would look like and then the different metals that are used there. And then here's another way of also showing a model shot of how the necklace looks on and the different ways, the different color ways that it comes in. Another way to show color ways and gemstones, um, and this is courtesy of Viv and Ingrid Jewelry, that they have all the information here, but then as you see below, they're gonna tell you, they're gonna show you the different gemstones that it comes in, the different semi-precious gemstones. And this is a really easy way to do this where it's showcasing, it's, it's showcasing the jewelry, the pieces, and then you can choose the different stones with it. And they do a really nice job too of, uh, I wanna just point out that the Viv and Ingrid logo is in the top right hand corner. They also have um, their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram, and their Pinterest too. And here's another, this is also courtesy of Viv and Ingrid. They do, a, they're mostly, um, they're mostly work with gemstones. And one of the things that they've done is they have this one sheet that is just all the stones. So a buyer can reference this in a really easy fashion. Unfortunately, my picture isn't as clear as what, um, how it comes out for them. So, but you can get an idea of being able to do that. And I can tell you also, a buyer who is a jewelry buyer is going to buy very differently and look for different things than a buyer who is a gift store or um, lifestyle buyer. Jewelry buyers know what they're doing as far as like, they know exactly what their customer wants. They know um, what kind of stones they want. They also know there's gonna be some variants of the stones that they order. So it's a it's a definitely a different buyer. Okay, and it, also in your line sheet, you wanna talk, you wanna make sure you have your terms and conditions. and a couple of things that are really, we're gonna go over what you need for your terms and conditions. And then we're gonna talk about some add-ons now that we're in this coming, we're still in a pandemic, but after last year, what can you provide to make sure the buyer knows how to work with you best and what's gonna work for them as well. So for terms and conditions, you wanna let them know um, how to place an order. Where do they go? Do they email you? Do they call you? Do they go, do you have a form that you can send them? They also, um, you wanna let them know that the, what the order minimums are and what the reorder minimums are. You wanna talk about your pricing. So I had mentioned earlier, if um, you don't have to have your MSRP on every single, um, piece, every product right there with your wholesale pricing. What you can do is in your terms and conditions, you can talk about your wholesale, You excuse me, you can talk about your um, MSRP and say that our MSRP is times 2.5. And you can also say, you know, um, we reserve the right not to sell if you sell under um, a certain amount. Uh, so for example, when, when I was at Dog Eared, if a uh, buyer decided to sell under Keystone, and Keystone means that you're doubling the price, the wholesale price. So let's say something is $5 wholesale, 
and then the buy, uh, the store decides to sell it for $7 retail, you can choose, because it's in your terms and conditions, you can choose not to sell to them because they're underselling what um, Keystone, and Keystone would be $10. So if you have questions about that, let me know. But you can state in your terms and conditions what your MSRP, and again, it's really important to know your who you're working with and have a conversation, you know, ask them, what are, what's your markup? What do you, you know, what's your margin for, for the um, jewelry that you sell? So okay to ask that. Um, payment. So how are you, how are they going to pay you? Are they going to, um, do you offer net 30? Um, what credit cards do you accept? Uh, do you do any wire transfers? Any type of payment that you accept, you should put it in your terms and conditions. Production. So this means what is your lead time? Where is your, where are you shipping from? Uh, all of that information should be listed under production. And shipping. Um, how are you shipping? USPS, um, UPS, FedEx, uh, and other, you know, if you're shipping overseas, do you ship overseas? Shipping is something that um, everyone's going to want to know how you're shipping. Repairs. Do, you know, it's always good to put that you stand behind your product that um, here's if there's a repair that needs to happen. Here are the steps in order to make it happen. And that's when you have a return authorization number, which is called an RA. <laughs> And but but let the buyer know how to go about getting a return authorization. Um, returns and cancellations. Are you going to offer uh, any cancellation time frame? So if somebody places an order, do you give them a five day or seven day grace period? Um, returns. Uh, is there a time frame where when they get the product that they can return it? Um, also, too, if for some reason they get the product and it's not moving, maybe there is some sort of um, arrangement you can do. You know, if pieces aren't moving uh, but in a certain time frame, we're open to doing an exchange. So, again, this is a great place to, to put that information. All right. And and also I wanted to mention with production, you know, I talked about lead times. You can also say with um, production, are there any can you do a rush? Um, are you doing any customization or personalization? You can talk about that in your production as well. Is everybody is this how is everybody doing here? I want to check in and see. I popped back in. So a lot of people are just having questions a lot about terms. Um, and obviously it's going to be different for every type of person, but yes. here's um, some for you. So okay. uh, is it normal to have a 2.2 markup now? Is doubling not, what are you seeing? I guess, what is your suggestion or advice or what are you seeing with the markup? Well, I, what I've been seeing and what I've been seeing for some time is it ranging from 2.2 to 2.5 for a markup. I rarely see it just doubling, um, just keystoning. And I think it's, um, uh, and even, you know, uh, catalogs, there are some catalogs that do a, um, a three markup. So, there with um with your line you're going to come into some situations where some your margin is going to be lower on some things and higher on others so you just have to weigh that weigh that out um but i think the most important thing is what will you not accept so if somebody is selling like i said if somebody is doubling the price i from when i was at dogyard we were fine with that we prefer them to do a times two or times 2.5, but, and we sold on our website a, um, a two point, I think it was a 2.25 markup. But, um, you know, if you're, they're underselling, uh, by key, underselling Keystone, I, you can just say that's not something we're okay with. Um, so it's over your terms, right? 
just so you, if you are doing retail and wholesale, you don't want to undercut your retail sales. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You, and, and, um, you know, now I think now so many people are online. So many designers are online that a lot of times you're selling the same price, um, online as the, the stores are selling in their stores and that's okay. But if you plan to sell wholesale, it's always nice to be a little higher on your retail site, um, on your, excuse me, on your website, um, just to support those wholesale accounts that you work with. In fact, I, I still, amazingly enough, even last year when everyone needed to be online, I still know some designers who sell wholesale and they don't sell it all online, direct to consumer, okay. which I think is a mistake. I don't think you should... I do think you should have your own site. I think it's really important to have, um, if you're selling wholesale, you need to have other, it's like having a, um, a one legged chair. <laughs> it doesn't work. You need a three legged chair, have diversify your business. Right. And some people are asking like, how's, how important is it to have a line sheet? If I'm guessing these people have a back end wholesale, um, maybe you log in through their website to get to the wholesale pricing. Um, I mean, I'm just not top of my head. If you meet people in person, you want to have something to give them. But I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I would say before you invest a lot of money in creating a whole nother site, it's like you've got your, your website and, and before you invest in doing a wholesale site too, is find out what your customer wants. I mean, do you have the demand to do that? Having a line sheet, you can, you can work through by just having your line sheet. Um, I have, uh, I can tell you Sierra Winter Jewelry, she has her line sheet, but she, you know, her customer, she's got a young fun, uh, buyers. They go to her website and they, she has a lot of great model shots. And so they really enjoy going through her website and seeing all the product and that works well for her. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's works for her, but other designers, it, you know, it just depends on who your buyer is and what they feel comfortable doing. Right. And so one other question was how you talked about a jewelry buyer is different from a gift shop or a lifestyle buyer. Can you just yeah. kind of explain the two different types of buyers? Sure. Um, if you're working with a jewelry buyer, they're going to come in and they're no, they're going to know exactly what they want. They're going to tell you, um, you know, they're, they're not going to question your, um, your pricing. They're not going to question, um, you know, the variance in the stones. They're going to know that information. They're really smart about their buys. They're really, um, I can tell you when I'm at, at trade shows, we would have buyers come in and jewelry buyers and they would be, um, buying by just saying, pointing and saying, I want five of those, 10 of those, 20 of those. They just don't hesitate because they're really, um, well educated in what they're, what they need and um, who their customer is. And a lot of, and I'm not going to say all of them, but a lot of gift store buyers uh, or lifestyle buyers, they're buying many categories. And so they're trying to know as much as they can about a lot of different categories. And if jewelry is not a big, it's, it's a good category for them, but it's not necessarily their only category, um, they're going to need some more help. They're going to look for the best sellers. They are going to need you to tell them, you know, uh, you know, uh, put together. And I, I can't tell you how many uh, stores, that, gift stores that I would just do the buys for them. I would find out what I can about the, the store, what their customer was like, um, the magic price point that they had for their store. So let's say it was $200 was their magic price point. It would sell all day long. Then I could put together an order for them based on um, asking them specific questions and and we would try things so um they're just not as um sure of their buys they need more help right um okay well i think some of these other questions about getting how some tips for getting accounts and stuff i think you're going to kind of get through in your presentation so i'm going to hold some more questions to the end because i think some are going to be answered okay awesome All right. So additionally, uh, it's great to have on your line sheet. And as I was saying earlier, you know, we're in this uncharted water that we've been in for a little, almost a year now. 
And what are some things that would be really good for a buyer to know? So um, additionally, how to become a wholesale account. I would suggest also having on your website uh, a place where people could sign up to become a wholesale account and just have a form to ask questions. What their what is their resale number? Um, how long have they been in business? What type of store are they? Um, what type of product do they buy? Um, you know, what's the location of their store? Getting that information because these are questions that you might be on the phone with them and asking that if that could, and if they say, oh, well, I don't have a store or I don't have a resale license yet, or it's saving you time. So if you could put together a form and have it available either to send to them to directly or that they can access, access on your website, that would be ideal. Um, so here when, on your terms and conditions, you can uh, to become a wholesale account and give them the different ways that they can connect with you on doing that. Um, added, you know, materials. Uh, do you offer uh, any displays or, you know, what types of materials are you working with? As I said earlier in the about page, if using recycled metals and um, ethically sourced stones are really important to you, put it in here as well, because it's also good to just remind them that that's really part of your brand that's really important to you. Um, new product, how it, it's great to put like, you know, a little, if you, if you go back to um, Sierra's, let's see, I'll take you back there. Oh, I don't know if I can, let's see. I'll go back really quickly so you can see that in Sierra's that she, Oh, maybe, sorry, I think it's this way. <laughs> Just remember it's under terms, conditions. I'll, I'll put it here. There we go. So um, this is Sierra Winter Jewelry. You'll see that up here, she has a little asterisk, a little indication, and that indicates a bestseller. So she, she does that throughout her line sheet, which is really helpful. So if you have new product or bestsellers, it's great to have some sort of asterisk or some sort of um, color differentiation or even saying the word new or best. Uh, it's just really, again, really helpful for a buyer. Also, terms and conditions, it's great to talk about exclusivity and proximity because you're gonna get that, uh, you'll be asked that quite a bit. Are you, can you be exclusive to me <laughs> or, do you monitor uh, the, you know, by mileage or, you know, how do you monitor so, you know, the store next door doesn't buy what I'm buying? So this is a great place to address it. And diversity, I think with everything that's happened um, and continues to happen regarding around uh, diversity and Black Lives Matter, I think it's really important to state that you your business is a, um, you know, is supports um, and is, you know, you have a, a diverse, you know, if you have a diverse team to state that, that it matters to you. Um, also the safety and cleanliness with the pandemic, I think it's also really important to note, like how are you caring for the product? Um, your environment, you know, it's your team, your health, the health and well-being of your team, the health and well-being of your customer. And you can say, here's our protocol. Uh, everything that, you know, we wear masks, um, we uh, do extra cleanings. When we package everything to ship, we're wearing gloves and masks. Uh, you know, how are you taking care of the product before it reaches them? And uh, also, what's happened more is virtual appointments. So that's a great thing to have in your terms and conditions. We're happy to have a virtual appointment with you. You can even have a link if you have a calendar where your people can uh, schedule appointments with you. You can have the link to that. You can uh, offer uh, FaceTiming or um, Zoom calls or other, you know, texting uh, is, is something else if you're offering texting. So ways, again, a ways to communicate with your buyers. And really important, 
partnerships, how are you going to be a really good partner to your buyer? And think about the ways that you can help them sell your product. How can you help support them? Because if they're successful with your product, they're going to buy more of your product. And it's just a win-win all the way around. So the partnership, are you providing them with images? Are you providing them with copy to um, put on social media? Um, are you, can you do drop ship for them? You know, what are the above and beyonds that you can do for your customer to let them know that you're supporting them? Another thing to do is um, giving them social media shout outs. You know, so just having it all there in your terms and conditions is a great thing to have. All right. So it, it, again, um, this is Sierra Winter Jewelry, her terms and conditions. As you can see, hers is not lengthy and she has everything that um, she needs to state there. And this is Viv and Ingrid's terms and conditions. They're whole, they call them the wholesale policies. And they, um, they even talk about, um, you know, how if working with um, nonprofits. So there's, there's a lot, of, as you can see, they have a lot more on their terms and conditions than Sierra had on hers. So it's, again, it's going to be based on your business. And one thing I also like to encourage is surprising and delighting your customers. This is something that Viv and Ingrid does. They said they included this in their line sheets and just a do you know, um, or did you know, did you know that we actually will replace an earring, that we stand behind our product? It's just a nice way to present that they actually care a lot about their product and this is what they can do. They give you a phone number, they give you an email address. So I love that they did this. And here's as seen in and as seen on. So as I was saying earlier, as seen in would be like the press. So on the left hand side here is press that Sierra Winter Jewelry has received. And on the right hand side, these are some of the um, celebrities, singers, and uh, even her cat who's <laughs> wearing her jewelry that her jewelry has been seen on. So it's also, you can see the personality of her line showing through and just even how she's arranged this. And this is press from Town and Reese. And you can see that they get a lot of uh, magazine press and uh, it really looks, it's clean. It, how they present it. It's just a whole different look than what we saw with Sierra. So again, the personality of the brand is coming through as well. All right. Now let's talk about knowing your buyer because it really does come down to knowing your buyer. And I know some of you are saying, oh my gosh, well, I, I'm not selling wholesale yet. How do I know my buyer without actually having not met them? Well, a couple of things you want to research and you want to ask questions and you want to listen and you want to follow up and you want to have a partnership and you want to connect. All of these things are important when you're working with a buyer and research is, you know, look on Google, um, look on Yelp, go to their website and see, you know, how are they, how are they merchandising their website? Um, what it, do they have a blog post, you know, read the blog post. Um, do they have a newsletter, sign up for their newsletter, get to know their brand and follow them, get to know them on social media. Um, I've, I actually have a designer who has gotten a couple stores because she's followed them on social media. She's been engaged with them. It takes a little while, but they've gotten a nice rapport and she bought something from one of the stores and it was a cute sweater and she put her necklace with the sweater and did um, uh, just took a picture of it and then tagged them in it. And it started this whole wonderful relationship and the story is now purchasing from, from her. So there's lots of different ways to, to go about getting kind of in front of a buyer. Um, the next thing too is the phone is always a good tool and 
whether or not you're actually um, getting a hold of the buyer. I always say that sales associates are a gold mine. They they can share with you. You can you know you can ask them questions of like, oh, I just you know let them know that you you're done your research. I was on your website. I really loved X, Y, and Z about it. I would love to know, you know, tell me about the store. I, I would love to know more about it. I just think it's so great and get to know them. I can't tell you how many times I have just done a cold outreach because I saw a store, I've researched them and I, you know, wanted to find out more about them and got a hold of a great store associate and and got some great information and then asked for I'd love to reach out to the buyer do you have an email address I could have or what's the best way to contact the buyer so um, associates are great and even in this time and I know some stores are closed and other stores are partially open and it, the phone is still a great tool um, also uh, Listen, so when you do call or do when you do email, make sure you're asking a lot of questions. It is should always be about them and not about you and find out how do they buy? Where do they do they attend any shows? Do they um, when or when do they buy? Um, typically for jewelry, there are five shows that used to dictate. Um, when jewelry buys would happen and they would be in January, um, March, May, August, and October. And things have changed and there's a lot more um, people are wanting more newness on a more regular basis. So you'll see people doing smaller uh, collections throughout the year or maybe even coming up with a couple of different pieces. But typically, um, so that's for jewelry. Um, jewelry buys five times a year, but typically I would say of going to a gift show, that would be January and August would be the two biggest times of year that people are buying because they're buying right after holiday and buying for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day and going into spring. And then August is going to be fall and holiday. 